religious and your parishioners also uh, women attendees of the retreat we are celebrating the greatest of the feasts of Our Lady we are present of course at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is being as always offered to God that in honor of this great reality that at the end of her early existence our Blessed Mother was taken up with body and soul into heaven. And what a procession, what a magnificent entry into heaven. What a most glorious coronation. This event, I'm sure, was second only to the ascension of our Lord. Of course, if being God, he would have the greatest glory paid to him as he ascended into heaven, went to sit at the right hand of the Father in his human nature, and was rewarded for his being obedient unto death, the death of the cross, having fulfilled the Father's will perfectly. So our lady, on her assumption day, having fulfilled the will of God perfectly, went to receive her reward. She drank the chalice of suffering to the utmost dregs. Obedient to the will of God for that she received the greatest reward possible for her. And she is made queen of heaven and earth. And we will reign so gloriously our has continued to do great, great gloriously and will do so eternally. She at the right hand of her son. It will never come to an end. To give us an idea of the enthusiasm and zeal and joy that I hope we can feel at least to some degree on this day, I would recall that a magnificent event on November 1st of 1950 went about for my conference talk last October, a five to ten minute video clip of that most auspicious day. Because uh, apparently it wasn't able to be done on August 15th, but on the next holy day of obligation, November 1st, during the holy year, and remember every 25 years the popes would have the holy year, the popes would come to Rome be able to receive special indulgences of visiting the innocent facilities of Rome, uh, participating in special liturgies and devotions. So 1950 was a holy year. And so on November 1st, Pope Pius XII chose to solemnly proclaim the dogma of the Assumption. Now, no new doctrine was invented, of course. We'll never see that in the Catholic faith. There'll never be a new doctrine revealed that we have to have to believe and save our souls. All the doctrines that we need to believe were given to us, faithfully handed on to us by the apostles, by the Catholic Church, and the teaching from our Lord Himself. There can only be further explanation of no change and no invention of doctrine. Impossible. So, Pope Pius XII was taking something that had been taught on a consistent basis for some 19 centuries plus, and most solemnly meant that. That's the way the Catholic Church operates. Many of her doctrines have not been solemnly taught. They didn't need to be. They were consistently, infallibly taught in an ordinary way. The day-to-day -day teaching of the church, which as Vatican Council once says, is infallible. I mean, would it make sense if the church could guarantee us the truth only if it was solemn teaching, but including a false, heretical, erroneous teaching? Possible as a square circle, it can't happen. So, 
anyway, on November 1st, and again, it was beautiful to see this short video clip because with 700,000 people present, all jammed into St. Peter's Square, the Pope made a solid entry. There were bishops and cardinals by the time of the by the thousands. That doesn't even count the many more thousands of priests and religious brothers and religious sisters and nuns who were present. And just everybody wanted to be there for that magnificent event where very, and most solemnly it was proclaimed, and this is an article of faith, the dogma of the Catholic Church, that Mary was taking up her body and soul into heaven. That pure body and soul, which had not been touched by the least taint of sin, and least of all by original sin, could not possibly be allowed to decay in the grave. She most fittingly was taken up into heaven. How magnificent a spectacle. Don't you wish you had been there? I certainly wish I could have. Of course, I didn't insist on that, so the possibility of it. What a, these are wondrous, just joyful, triumphant events in the history of the church. Something else that gives us an idea of the triumph of Our Lady's Assumption and Coronation, I think we can get it from the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, now Anglican, and not an Anglican person, sad state of the religion, Anglicanism, but she was crowned as head of state, and even the Catholic Church would have acknowledged that. But this was the first coronation that was broadcast to the entire world. This happened three years later, 1953. And if you can ever see it, it'll be, you just see the outpouring of happiness, parades, or how do they say the name of the rock, sure. uh, the just, just celebrating with great joy and love the coronation of their queen. It would have been millions who saw her in the streets of London as she went by in a golden carriage. And then millions upon millions of more who saw that broadcast, as I said, on television. This was a pretty new thing at the time. Something like that can give us just a tiny sliver of understanding of how great the coronation of our day was. Because it was the angels and saints, uncounted numbers of them. Almighty God placed the crown upon her head. We'll have to wait to heaven, to, to, to get to heaven to see the magnificence of that. All that earthly panoply and praise was for an earthly sovereign. Who will die one day and the law cease for her. And besides, it's a, it's a limited monarchy. The kingship of Christ, the queenship of our Lady, will last forever after all the kingdoms and earthly powers will have crumbled into the dust, and nothing will be left of them. They are already gloriously waiting. Jesus is king. Mary is our queen. And they will do so forever. May we persevere in that all important state of grace. Persevere in our efforts so that we too may receive our crown, our reward, and be with them forever. Give something, Our Lady, something, something special today, just as loyal children and subjects do. We give something that also ask her for something today. She is most inclined on the day of such great celebration uh, to reward her, her children, her subjects, and we can claim those titles. The angels can only claim the title of subject that we claim the title that 
is sweeter than the title of children in her because Jesus has shared her. And has shared her with us. To give you an idea, we're at Ephesus, we read, this is from private revelation, of course, from an official doctor of the church, it doesn't have to be believed, but the day that our lady went to uh, went to heaven, all the souls of her return were released in celebration of that event. And every year, on the assumption our lady releases through her intercession, many souls from her return. So that just gives us an idea of the emphasis that she is so willing to, to practice. She does it, of course, at the time, but in a special way, on special, uh, special uh, occasions or events on just today. It's a very real thing, the celebration of her assumption. So may you be greatly blessed on this day. Let us keep our eyes on heaven today. Praise that we can keep our eyes on our heavenly goal, keep them on our heavenly queen in a special way today. And you will always inspire us to keep working towards our heavenly goal. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.